Uh, Matthew 20, 8, 20, 28, 8, 20. Jesus came near and said to them, All authority has given to me in heaven and in earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Can y'all hear me? Oh, there it goes. Cool. All right. Good morning, y'all. So Matthew is actually one of my favorite gospels, so I'm actually really excited to be able to preach through Matthew or preach the sermon out of Matthew first time. Um, but I just want to open up with a little bit of a story with y'all. Um, this is a story about a conversation I had with a friend of mine. His name is Kyle. Um, we went to college together uh, back in North Carolina, and um, this is it's a little joke that he said that he said about me. Uh, so he and I, he and I love to talk about stories. We love uh, just like anyone else. We love watching a good uh, TV show or movie and just being able to talk about the story. So uh, whenever we have a certain show that we're both watching at the same time, I get a little curious about some of the characters or what's going to happen. And so I just ask the question. I look it up on Google. I get the answer but I end up spoiling the show for myself anyway, right? For me, for me, that doesn't change how much I love the story. I'm still gonna watch it, I'm still gonna enjoy it just as much if I didn't know. But whenever I talk about it with Kyle, somewhere along the line I end up spoiling it for him because I started telling him what I just learned. <laughs> and he, uh, just in that conversation, um, in that conversation, like just in these kind of conversations, he, uh, when we also talk about scripture, one thing he said to me was, I'm surprised that Revelation isn't your favorite book as much as you love spoilers, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> so in the spirit of spoilers, I want to begin this, I want to begin this with actually a picture of what God is planning to do, okay? And this, it comes from Revelation 21, verses 3 and 4. Uh, where, where John gets a vision or a picture of the new heaven and the new earth. Uh, he says this, Then I heard a loud voice from the throne, Look, God's dwelling place is with humanity, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and, their, and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Grief, crying, and pain will be no more, because the previous things have passed away. Ultimately, this is what God is, is doing. This is what we're living toward. This is what we're going to. But in the day by day, we're called to make disciples, inviting people to join us on this journey as we journey, as we get to this end goal. So the question arises, how do we go from what I just read in Revelation 21, this beautiful picture where there is no more crying, no more death, no more suffering, no more pain, and, and that God himself will be dwelling with us, with humanity, and we will be dwelling with God. How do we go from today, what we see in our world today, to, to that? With, at Hope Church, we put that into four different rhythms. The first one is that we love God. And the second is that we love others. The third is that we make disciples, and we're going to be talking about that in this text today. And the fourth is, going to, is to do ministry. How do we do this? We do this by connecting with God ourselves. We do that by connecting with others, and we also do that by connecting God to uh, others to God. And so we look at uh, this passage in Matthew 28. Uh, there's one central thing, there's one central point that Jesus wants us to know, and that is Jesus wants his people to connect others to him, and he does that through his own power and his own presence. 
And again, we do this in the context of Hope Church by connecting with God, connecting with others, and connecting others with God. And, and if we can just go back to the text real quick. So Matthew 28, 18 through 20, Jesus says this, uh, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. So the immediate context just surrounding Matthew. Uh, is that this is obviously after Jesus' crucifixion. He's resurrected, and he's appearing to the disciples. He's talking with them. He's uh, about to ascend to heaven to be, uh, to be with God. Uh, and, and to, um, but he doesn't leave the disciples alone. He gives them a command, and he promises them two things, or he assures them of two things, rather. He assures them of his power, of the authority that has been given to him, to him and he assures them of his presence, that even though he's ascending, he's still going to be with them. He's going to be dwelling in them. And so if I could just break this down into three different parts, if, if you listen to how I described it in the, in the preaching team meeting, it was actually not, it was, it was kind of funny. I said that like our role is sandwiched between Jesus's role um, because it, it really it is. And when you look at the first point, is something that should be reassuring to us, what we believe in. So the first point is that what we believe in is the power, uh, we believe in the authority of Jesus. Okay, so on our journey, as we're connecting to God, we have, uh, we have to, we first have to believe in the authority of Jesus. If you read Matthew's gospel, it's chock full of Jesus displaying his authority. His authority over sin and death, his authority over the lives of his, lives of his disciples. His authority over, over sickness because of the amount of miracles that he performed. Healing, uh, healing the lame, the, the, those who couldn't speak. His authority over nature because he calmed the sea. He multiplied uh, the loaves and, he, and the fish. So with this, you also understand that the Holy Spirit is also actively at work in our lives because Jesus actually talks about this in John's gospel, that the Holy Spirit is actively at work in our lives, conforming us to the image of Christ. And he's also actively in the work of others' lives around us, bringing them to an opportunity to hearing the good news of Christ if they haven't heard it already. If you think about your own friends that do not believe, the Holy Spirit is at work in their lives. And he wants to use you to bring them to at least hear the gospel, to at least hear it. So the second point is that we obey the command of Jesus. This is where our role comes into play. Okay, so we have the first part where Jesus has his, we believe in Jesus' authority. The second part is where we actually do something about this. We believe in Jesus' authority, therefore we make disciples. We fulfill this command of Jesus as the result of Jesus' power, and in that, we have a list of things that we go about with our own lives. And again, as I said, the first is to make disciples. We connect others to Jesus and invite them to learn about him and to learn from him. Jesus offers rest for those who take and learn from him. And obviously, honestly, one of my favorite passages in Matthew's gospel is Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 to, uh, through 30, where Jesus actually says, come to me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Learn from me for I'm meek and lowly in heart, and, I will, and you will find rest for your souls. For my burden is easy and my yoke is light. One of my favorite passages. But in that, we still, like, in that text, we still have something to learn from Jesus. And so, if you take your own lives, for example, if you're a Christian, then you're a Christian because somebody connected you to Christ. Somewhere, someone, so, uh, someone somewhere along the way in your life connected you to Christ. They shared with you this good. They shared with you the gospel. So you found that rest for yourself. 
what Christ wants us to do is, is to take the rest that we found and share that with others. The second thing he wants us to do is to baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That right there in and of itself distinguishes us as followers of Jesus. That's not, that's not to say that, like, that's not saying that baptism is like what you have to do to be saved. Like, that's not, it's not a list of do's and don'ts. That's just, it's just an outward expression of the inward change that's actually gone on in your, in your heart and in your life. That's just the first step of just saying, I'm actively showing and displaying that I am a follower of Jesus, that I am connected with Christ. And the third is to teach them to observe everything I've commanded you. One of the very, just if, if I could stay in the context of Matthew right here, right? There's two things that Jesus taught in this, in this gospel that would have been think that the disciples would have been thinking about and that's first the sermon on the mount so we just got done with that series we've learned in in the sermon on the mount what we're <laughs> what the law says what we're supposed to do how we fail at it and yet how christ fulfills it but we also learn how do we go forward as a result of that how do we go forward to being conformed to the image of christ and how does that shape our our moral and ethical decisions? How does that shape our interactions with other people? How does that shape who we are as people being identified as Christians? He also taught about, it just if you read the, through the rest of Matthew's gospel, just he also taught about what the kingdom of God is like, what the kingdom of heaven is like, and how precious it is, uh, precious it is and, how, and how magnificent it is, and, and the extents to which people wanted to go to actually bring the gospel uh, bring the gospel or the good news of the kingdom of heaven to others. Jesus wants us to teach those things to others. Then the last point, if you have, just again, a quick recap. The top part, first command or first thing we know is that Jesus has all authority in heaven and on earth. We, we believe in that authority. As a result of that authority, we go and teach others about who Jesus is, and we connect others to him. And as they come to know Christ, and as we and ourselves come to know Christ, we distinguish ourselves by, by, uh, by just obedience to his commands. And we learn about who Christ is as we go on in our daily lives, and we also teach others to obey those, those same commands. And then the last thing is that we get to rest in his presence. It's one thing if Jesus says, okay, I have all power, I have all authority, now go make disciples. I'll be over here, though. Have fun. Like, that's, that's tough. That's, that just without that presence, like, how, I would still ask the question, how could I get that done? Like, okay, Jesus, you have the authority, but then, like, I don't have that. How do I do this? God in his faithfulness, Christ in his faithfulness, knows that we cannot do that on our own. So we get to rest in his presence. That without Christ's presence, none of this would be possible. That connecting others with Jesus is not dependent on who I am, thank goodness, it's not dependent on who you are, but it has everything to do with who Jesus is. He's given us this, uh, he's given us everything we need to complete the mission that he's given us. And as we share the gospel, we get to experience the power and the presence of Jesus in our own lives. And looking at this text, he, like, again, as I've been saying, that he's given us this command sandwiched by his role, like his authority, what he, what he has. He has the authority and he's with us and we get to live out the ability or the opportunity that we have to, to share the gospel, resting in his presence, 
and believing in his authority. If I can give just two illustrations, another one, a, a, one is going to be just a personal story about how one of my best friends, uh, another one of my best friends, actually, I'm sorry, so my friend Richard, he shared the gospel with me. And I, I've told y'all this the last time I preached, but just in my own testimony, he shared the gospel with me for over two years until I, before I came to Christ. Like he shared the gospel with me a lot. But just to go from those years that he was sharing the gospel with me and seeing nothing come out of it to now, like, I'm standing in front of you now, like, with this kind of an opportunity, you know, it's, it's one of those things that in those days when he was sharing the gospel with me and I was saying, I don't want to hear it, I don't, I don't care, well, that's cool for you. One thing I'm pretty sure, and we've talked about this, he's told me, like, he he was like, God, are you at work in his life? Are you really at work? To now, again, and I say this wanting you to actually think about how did you come to become connected to Christ? Did that person think, I don't, I don't see it happening. God, are you at work? And are you at work in their life? Are you doing this? Are you like, Huh. the stress that's going on there. But then just to see that moment that you actually came to Christ and you actually believed in the amount of rejoicing that they had to have had. Like, think about that and remember the people that you do want to share Christ with. Remember the people that you are sharing Christ with. And if, there, if there's no response there, you were once in their position. I was once in their position. But nothing escapes the power of Jesus. If we're sitting here as followers of Christ, no matter how much you probably never would have thought before this, that you would have ever been sitting and worshiping Jesus week in and week out, and now you are. If Christ can say, I, I just am a firm believer that if Christ can save me, he can save anybody. <laughs> you know? In another example, Paul, we're going through Acts in some of the community groups now. He's a great example. Went from persecuting the church, went from actively, went from actively persecuting the church. And on the road to Damascus where he was going to go persecute a whole other church, Christ appeared to him and reoriented everything about his life. Where he went from being where, we, where he went from literally on the road to, to, to persecuting a whole other church to now he is out preaching the gospel, preaching the same good news that he was trying to silence. The same good news. In, in, in youth, we're going through Philippians. Philippians is a letter where Paul is actually writing from prison for preaching the gospel. Um, from persecuting the church to writing letters to churches and while he's in prison for preaching the same message that he was trying to silence if god can save paul <laughs> and use him to do that man how great is our god how great is our god he took uh, access filled with with the stories of how paul brought the good news of Jesus all over the Roman Empire. Your own testimony is the story of God's grace where he brought, where he, uh, where he brought the good news to you through a friend, through a family member, through someone, and he's using you to bring the good news to someone else. And so, this is what, it, it shows us who God is in this way. That number one, God declares his people are righteous through the work of Christ, through his power, on, uh, through his death and resurrection on the cross. Uh, and then he entrusts us with that same message. He entrusts us with that message to take to those closest to us. And if there's one thing I'm learning in seminary, I say that because of how many professors have said it in different classes, and I didn't think that they would say it in all these different classes because they kind of didn't 
in one way they kind of don't seem like they intersect, but they do, you know. Go figure. That God is in the multiplication business. It's not just me and then, okay, I'm only going to go tell one other person because this is the only other person that I know. I don't, don't know only one person. You don't only know one other person. He's like, go share that with someone else. Them, that person, go, they go share it with someone else. That person goes share it. It's multiplying. It's a multiplication. And again, if you look at Acts, in Acts chapter 2, really all throughout Acts, every single time you see an, a move of God it's, and God multiplied this many people and God added to and God so many people, multitudes and multitudes of people. God is in the multiplication business in that it teaches us about about who uh, about what God has done is that he has made a way for us to know him and he has given us everything that we need in Christ with his authority and, and with his presence to be able to go make disciples. To be obedient to Christ and to distinguish ourselves as such and to teach others to obey his commands. Then our minds should actually be transformed continually because they're prone to wander away from what the Lord calls us to do, but they should be transformed into a desire to living this out. Sorry. There we go. Cool. All right. And this changes us in, in how, uh, I guess, I'm sorry, time out. How does this change who we are? The first thing we could do is to pay it forward. Again, if we remember back, like it, just, just thinking about the way that you came to Christ was because another Christian connected you to Christ. In a way, it's almost, it's, that's paying it forward. I don't know if you've ever done this before, or I don't know if you've ever done it or experienced this, but I remember one time, like, while I was working at Starbucks, that uh, especially during the holiday season, because people are fe feeling extra generous, either they'll give, like, really good tips or they'll pay it forward. They'll pay the next, per they'll, pay the, they'll, they'll pay it forward in the sense of they'll, they'll pay their own, they'll buy their own drink, and then they'll buy the drink for the person behind them. And then that car comes up. Oh, here's your drink. Oh, how much does it cost? Don't worry about it. Someone's already paid it. They paid it forward. That person then, either because they're like, well, I don't want to be the jerk that doesn't do it, or they're like, they feel that sense of generosity. They do it too. And then you get this long streak of cars as they're paying, paying it forward, paying it forward, paying it forward, until they get that one car that has like five drinks and it's like $60, and they're like, no, I can't do that. <laughs> but... That's what, essentially, that's what we're doing. We're paying it forward because we've been given such a, a magnificent grace to know who Christ is. That we pay it forward to the person that doesn't know him. We're trying to connect that person to Christ. Believing, number one, in his authority and in, and in the work of the Holy Spirit. And believing in his presence with us. Resting in that. So we get to share that same opportunity that we've been given to have this life in Christ with others. And then how do we, and, and this changes what we do. Uh, essentially, this changes what we do. Because as a church, we connect with God, case in point here, by attending worship services. While you're here, or while you're planning on, you know you're going to be coming here, Lord willing, by his grace that he sustains you to the next week. If you know you're coming, invite a friend. That's to pay it forward. Individually, we uh, connect with God through our prayer, through reading scripture, through fasting, and with our giving. Collectively, again, corporate worship services and communion as we partake in the Lord's table. We connect with others, which in that sense is, as a church, we get, get involved in community groups. Ooh, excuse me. We get involved in community groups. Again, invite a friend. 
We get involved in, com- in the community with community events through soccer camps and Kids Fest. And then we also get to connect others with God. That God redeems those, the opportunities that we have to connect with others, God redeems those for opportuni- as opportunities to connect them with him. So we connect others with God individually through personal evangelism and in disciple making. Those two go hand in hand. And I'll, I say that because like when I first became a Christian, I was kind of taught the two as two separate things. You evangelize, but then you make disciples at a later point when it's evangelize and then and make disciples. Share your faith. It's one. This is it's one event. Evangelism and making disciples is one thing. And collectively, by joining a ministry team, we will have those starting up in November. So we'll continue, like, uh, we'll give you the information as, uh, for that as, as it comes along. But we have opportunities every single day to connect others with God. And they're sometimes in the most mundane events, because sometimes when we, read, especially when we read scripture, when it comes to reading the New Testament, when it, well, when it comes to reading the gospel and reading Acts, we see these grand events. We see these grand events, these, these big events. In our lives, we're like, okay, I got it. That, that almost subconsciously tells us we have to wait for the big event. It's not always the case. Sometimes it's just waking up and talking to that friend that you don't that that you know that you have this good relationship with that you've been talking to that you've known them for years and you know they don't know Christ and just saying okay whew, let me tell you about Jesus I make that sound easy but I can prom- I know it's hard I know it's hard it's hard for me It's hard for us all. But two things, two things that lightens that load. Number one is that Jesus has all authority in heaven and on earth. It's not on you. It's not on you. It's on Christ. And he's with you. It's not based on me. Someone coming to Christ is not based on me has nothing to do with me. I'm just the one that God, by his grace, used to share this good news. You are only the person that God, by his good grace, has used to share the good news of Christ. It is solely dependent upon Jesus. He's like, I got the weight to bear. You just go tell. this, I want us to be able to reflect and to respond. Again, just just take some time to just think about like what has been said and um, where if the Lord is, is, <laughs> is convicting you through this, not in a way of you're not good enough or anything like that, but kind of building a fire in you to say, okay, Jesus, I know this is what you you have this you have all you have the authority and you're with me i can share this good news with someone else so what has god shown you today in that and what are you doing or what are you going to do about it and with that how can we pray for you if 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 there's a point in any of the four rhythms that we're that we want to live out as as a church, connecting with God, connecting with others, or connecting others with God, if there's anything that we can do to help you with that, then by all means ask the questions. We're definitely here to do that. We want to see people in community groups. We want to see people at the community events. We want to connect with others, and we want to connect others with God. While we ourselves connect with God. So Tucson, come up and play a little bit for us.
I'm going to pray and just take some time to ref- <laughs> okay. uh, just take some time to reflect. And if you look in your seat uh, or somewhere or somewhere on your road, you'll have uh, have uh, communion packets. Um, take the time just to reflect on the goodness of Christ, your relationship with him. And when you're ready, part, when you're ready, go on uh, take take part in communion. Lord, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for the message of the gospel that you've given us. And Lord, not only that, but thank you for your power, the authority that you have over sin, over death, over our lives. Thank you that we have this opportunity to to believe in your authority, to obey your commands, and to rest in your presence. I pray, Father, that as we uh, continue to just live and breathe as church, that we uh, are we connect with you, we connect with others, and connect others with you. So, Lord, I pray that you conform us to the image of your Son, and this is all to your glory. It's in your Son Jesus' name, Amen.